Hello and welcome to the first ever uh, curriculum night and it is also the first ever virtual curriculum night for me at Rocky Lake Elementary. I'm Shelley Bembridge and I'm a sixth grade teacher for your student this year. So a little bit about me, I am a Dartmouth girl born and raised in Dartmouth and I went to St. Mary's University and uh, when I was younger I received a dual degree in Bachelor of Commerce in Accounting and Global Business Management as well as a Bachelor of Arts in Internet international development studies and I had the good fortune of being on an exchange program to China when I was in university and I actually studied at uh, Shandong Normal University in the province of Jinan or in the province of Shandong in the city of Jinan and that's about 500 miles north of Beijing so that was quite an experience for me and one that I, I think has continued to shape who I am. I have only one sibling, a brother, John. Uh, I love to be outside. I really enjoy hiking. I like biking. I love being near the ocean. I love running, technology, and knitting. And I probably, after the last six months or so, I probably would add gardening to my list of things that I love. I'm currently working on my second master's in educational technology at Memorial on, uh, University, and that's an online program, and I'm just about to start my thesis. I have a fear of heights and living critters. Taking care of children is one thing, but I'm not so good at taking care of critters. Um, I have five children, as you can see in this picture, in my lovely blended family. Uh, my partner is Louis, and uh, he's a director at Halifax Water. And then my youngest, my baby, is Rowan, and he is currently starting the welding program at NSCC. Uh, my eldest son, Keegan, is uh, in his third year of computer science at Dalhousie. And then we have Louie's daughter, Talia, who is doing her master's in neuroscience at um, McGill in Montreal. We have Dylan, who is studying um, graph, uh, computer game design at George Brown in Toronto. And then we have... Um, our uh, Louis' youngest son, Addison, and he's still trying to figure out what he's going to do. Um, this is my second career teaching. I started off in a family business for 10 years, and then after my uh, first son was born, I went into my education degree. And it certainly is a career that certainly has fit well with my family. Um, I live in Bedford myself, and I enjoy being able to walk to work or ride my bike to work. That's one of the great things about living and working in the same community. I have 18 years of experience in education, and I spent the last nine years at Bedford South and loved every minute of it, but it was a choice I made to move to Rocky Lake Elementary. I was really excited about the opportunity to work with one-on-one -on -one technology, and I think we're really lucky to have uh, the students with Chromebooks and to be using all the platforms that we will be using this year. So I'm really excited to be part of that this initiative. Uh, my first career was in accounting and um, my parents owned a pharmacy in Dartmouth um, for my whole life. But I, I certainly worked in a full-time capacity in the pharmacy for 10 years before I went into education. And I technology is really important to me. But not just for the sake of using technology, I really try to find it to support the differentiated learning needs of students and to help students learn to work wiser. So I, in that vein, I am an Apple educator and I've been certified also as a book creator ambassador. I also have Google certification and I'm frequently a technology mentor and present at different technology conferences. So it certainly is my passion and what I love to bring to the classroom. We have um, a great group. We actually have gone down in numbers, so we actually now only have 25 students, and they're very different learners, and uh, they come from various backgrounds and with varying strengths, and they are anxious to share with their classmates, and they're so happy to be back together after such an extended absence from school. And it's really been nice to see we've got students who have come from Basin View, students who have come from Bedford South, and then we also still have a lot of students who have not been in 
in our community before. We have some new Canadians and people who have moved from across the country. So we're really lucky to be all coming together at the new site. Uh, we've spent the last month getting used to our, our new norms. And there are lots of new norms that we're having to deal with at school. And uh, we're really trying to build a positive classroom community, getting to know one another, establishing routines, procedures, and developing respectful relationships with each other. After such an extended break from school, it's really hard to just jump right back into curriculum. Um, and we certainly are t dipping our toes into curriculum as we learn all the platforms, especially with the technology. So it may not be the pace of learning that I usually start with in grade six, and it's certainly not the style of teaching that I'm used to. Um, so we are having to be really flexible and, uh, you know, following the back to school plan has certainly got its challenges, especially with masks being worn all day. So we're certainly spending more time than ever um, outside. I do find it quite challenging to get outside and do work. The students are really having, it's, it's just hard to do. We're not really set up for outdoor classrooms or outdoor learning. So we're, we're trying to find that right balance um, and, and, you know, exploring as much as we can. So um, I have posted these schedules on the classroom websites and students do have access to these um, schedules as well. They're pretty loose right now in terms of our readers and writers workshops. One of the things that we try really hard to do now with an integrated curriculum is we try to weave all of the outcomes into as many um, holistic projects as we can. And we really try to make the learning meaningful and cross-curricular. So sometimes, you know, it might say readers and writers workshop, but you might be working on a project that has kind of integrated uh, outcomes from all of the subjects. So, you know, what you will notice with the schedule is our specialists are, are less <laughs> apt to change throughout the day. So we certainly have music on Mondays and Wednesdays. We have phys ed every Tuesday and Friday. And then our schedule kind of rotates for French. We have um, two, two hour blocks of French on week one, and then we have three one hour uh, blocks of French on week two. So those are really um, the only things that don't change. Um, we are working on a staggered recess Break and a staggered lunch break and again we're trying to get outside on those days that it's really nice out we're staying out a little bit longer we're trying to get those masks off as much as we can and again it's an important way to kind of bring the children together through play and get them integrated with one another so again, you can find all the this information either on the ebook, which I I will continue to update the ebook that I sent at the beginning of the year with pertinent information, so that you have one spot to go to. Um, I also try to include the the calendars on our newsletters so that everybody knows what week it is. But it really it won't have much impact on on things through our week. I also try to prepare um, a weekly schedule every week. And um, again, this is primarily for if students are not there for an extended period of time, which is happening already as children are getting COVID tests. I know there's a lot of absences that are happening. And I try to provide this so that there are ways for students to stay connected, even if they aren't in school. I think it's gonna be really important this year. Um, now we've been having some Wi-Fi issues at our school lately so we are always going to you know and just sometimes we kind of take a little tangent and we try to be responsive to you know what the students are interested in so for instance we might not completely stick to this schedule to uh, the letter and sometimes things take us a little bit longer than we had anticipated so for instance this week we have yet to get to any of these cross-curricular things in the afternoon we haven't done our introduction letter to our book buddies we haven't even started science yet because our technology hasn't been working very well but we've had some great learning and some great discussions, particularly about the Orange Shirt Day. Um, and I hope your students have shared with you some information about the, um, the video that we've been watching of Gord Downey's um, Secret Path. It was really amazing discussion and I am so impressed with the conversation that has, has come out of watching that video. So I hope they'll share that with you. 
In terms of classroom expectations, um, we've come up with some classroom rules and norms. I really want our classroom to be a calm and happy place. So it's really important that we treat each other's we treat others with respect, we practice safe behavior, we use respectful language and actions. I really want students in grade six to learn to take care of their own belongings, taking pride in our work and trying our best. That's one of the things that is really a challenge this year and it's a real opportunity in my eyes because I want students to be really proud of the work that they're creating rather than just simply, you know, quickly finishing it to submit it, you'll see that difference when they really are proud of it. And what's nice is that because they're creating a lot of that work digitally, or at least publishing it digitally, they'll be able to share it with a greater audience, which is also fabulous. Um, we look out for one another, we celebrate difference, and we are so lucky to be in such a diverse school. I always say I like I work in the United Nations because we've got students from Trinidad, South Africa, we've got students from India. Uh, it's just amazing to have Korea, China. We've got so many people who have come together and you know we're learning from one another as we go. It's a great opportunity. So um, we want our learning space to be safe and also free from judgment and ridicule. And one of the things that's really um, an important concept for me is the fact that um, not all students work at the same speed. And, you know, we talk about the difference between driving a Lamborghini and driving uh, maybe a station wagon. They all get to the destination, but they might not get there uh, at the same time. And I really think that's a strong analogy to make with students as well. I want them to not compare themselves to each other, but think about how they're doing in terms of their personal best effort. And I want each of them to be working to their own potential. And certainly if you notice that your student needs, you know, more enrichment, um, as I get to know them better, I'll be able to provide those enrichment opportunities. Because again, I don't want them to be bored and I want to give them just right work. So um, that's something that's important to me. And certainly if your student is feeling like they're not getting the, the challenge that they need, they should speak to me about that. And uh, again, we'll, we'll work on that as we get to into the learning a little bit deeper. We have lots of fun things going on in our classroom. Um, I have started assigning classroom jobs, and so students will be doing some fun jobs around the classroom, like video journalists and editors. I also have equipment managers, and I have facilities managers and social media managers. So there's lots of fun things that they get to do and give them a little bit of responsibility and ownership in our classroom. I will also be starting a spotlight student in the next couple of weeks, so that's a great way to showcase different students. Um, again, that technology infusion, I feel so lucky to be at a school where students have one-to-one -one technology. Just the login time alone is such a huge time saver, and the fact that I don't have to go looking for a cart, so it's wonderful. We will also be using Seesaw, and I will be providing you access to digital portfolios so you can see what your students are doing. Um, we're also having community meetings, so we're following the Caring Schools community um, manual and uh, really working on developing, you know, good practices for living together and working together. So. Um, and the, the ultimate goal is to create um, and cultivate problem solvers. I like to say that, you know, there are no problems, only solutions that we haven't yet found. So some of the things that we're doing, um, we're really loving Book Creator. The students are creating some amazing masterpieces. And so uh, it's really fun to be able to showcase the, their work. And uh, they're really enjoying creating those books. Um, we also have an ebook each week. Um, and that's where the, the journalists will be working to help us um, reflect on our learning and also plan for the next week's learning. And we also create videos on Flipgrid, and Flipgrid has got some, you know, some real traffic. You look here, they've, we've got 82 responses so far, and that works out to 1,205 views. And again, it's a really great way for the students 
when they have to physically distance to still stay connected. And then we've got 42 comments and 25.2 hours of engagement. And Flipgrid is actually the tool that we'll be using so that we can still have um, digital book buddies uh, with the grade two students at Basin View. So it's a really wonderful tool. And I'm just going to go back to that screen for a second because some of the things that we've been using it for our newsletter updates, our Chromebook tutorials, we've done, um, we've started our read aloud um, for our students at Basin View. And then we also used it at the beginning of the year to get to know one another. So just going to go forward rather than backwards. Many parents have been reaching out to me and wondering about homework and we've really been told to go easy on the students so we haven't started homework expectations yet. Um, I, the, really the only homework I've been assigning so far has been bring back forms, bring in indoor shoes, charge your Chromebook, that sort of thing and you know the occasional if you haven't finished your work, finish your work. Um, but we will be starting uh, that so next week students will be expected to read at home for at least 30 minutes every day um, and also starting next week if a student does not complete their work in class they are expected to complete the assignment at home as needed. Now there are many reasons why students do not complete their work in the allotted time and some of those are beyond their control and if there are special um, circumstances or exceptions that um, I'm not aware of and I don't know, I don't like that, don't affect the whole class. I'm really encouraging students to speak to me directly. Um, and, and if we're experiencing Wi Fi issues, which we have, I'll modify due dates and deadlines as needed because that's something that none of us can control, as frustrating as it is. I will, I will take that into consideration so they don't need to worry about that. Um, the other thing I want to tell parents is that students who are struggling with an assignment and unable to complete their work should also speak to me directly and ask me for support. And again, if they're not comfortable doing it face to face in the classroom in front of their peers, they can certainly send me a message um, through Gmail. And it is not a parent's responsibility in grade six um, to reach out to me directly. I really want to encourage the students to take ownership for that as we're trying to cultivate self-directed and independent learners, not um, learners who are dependent on their parents for communicating their needs. So that's really important to me. And I, I do assure you that students will never get in trouble for not passing in an assignment because they don't know how to do it. They, I, I do expect them to review the assignment instructions and a lot of them just want to skip right to doing the activity and it's only when they jump into the activity that they realize they have no idea what to do. So I'm really trying to get them to take a step back from starting and to read the instructions over and to use the tools that they can whether it's highlighting what they think is important, making their own jot notes, but I really want them to like read over that and I call that the three read strategy. Read over the instructions three times before they reach out and ask for support. And again, I really think I'm cultivating an important life skill, not just a skill that will serve them well in my classroom. So um, on Thursdays, I'm going to try to get into the routine of summarizing outstanding assignments and sending you an email with that assignment. Now, it's not because I expect the students to finish that assignment on Thursday night. I will be providing um, opportunity for students every Friday. It's fun, fr fun fr Friday finish up. Um, they will be provided with that time to finish up their work in class. But I do want you to use this time, this report, as an opportunity to have a conversation with your child about how they're managing their time in class and how they're managing the workload. Ask them if they're struggling with something, you know, ask them how come they haven't submitted it or, you know, a lot of the time it could be a simple fact that they forgot to click submit. I know we've got some really conscientious students who are <laughs> this week have been begging me to finish giving them all the pieces so that they can click submit and I, I think it's great you know I, I can tell they are really um, taking this seriously and I know that that we're going to have a great year of growth and learning when they're, when they're already 
showing me such great habits. Um, as a parent, you will not be able to log on to Google Classroom to see the assignments unless your child logs in and shows the assignments to you. And I really encourage you to ask them to do that. You know, like I, I think it's great that you have that firsthand exposure to what the assignment looks like. And uh, so I really encourage you on Thursday nights to try to say, log in, show me what you're doing. That's an important thing. So on Friday, as I mentioned, it will be a uh, fun finish up time. They also get on Friday some free choice time too if they've all got their, their work finished. So it really is trying to encourage them to use and manage their time wisely in class. Um, and beyond that, um, students are expected to complete assignment, assignments at home independently before asking for assistance from their parents. I really, I never try to give an assignment that I don't think students should be able to do independently. So they really shouldn't be coming to you saying they need your help. It's great if they want to have a conversation with you or if maybe you can clarify or ex explain something in a different way, but they should be able to do the work independently. And if they can't do the work independently, then they should come and see me. That's really important. So um, I will provide links for you and I've provided them in the brochure that came home today. So if you're interested in diving more deeply into the curriculum, you can do that. Um, and you can also find out more about the principles of learning and, and how, you know, kind of how we design our curriculum based on these principles of learning um, and and fundamentally we we are building our curriculum on a constructivist model of learning so we want students to construct their own knowledge and make it meaningful and build upon their their prior knowledge and experiences and you know that that becomes evident in all of our classroom discussions and we really encourage them to reflect and make connections um, and so that's how we want them to learn. Um, we also, and, and this is more challenging in COVID, we want our learning to be social and collaborative. And that's why we are so lucky to have one-to-one -one technology because we can still use um, the social and collaborative learning through the technology and keep the physical distancing. So that's why you'll find they're doing a lot of peer editing. They're, they will be, you know, using Flipgrid so that they can still work together and communicate with one another, you know, on a regular basis. Um, and they can, you know, with the with the tools in Google Classroom, they can, uh, you know, both or multiple small groups can be working on the same project, which again is really fabulous. Um, and. The other principle of learning is that we really want students to see the connections between what they're doing in the classroom and the world uh, around them. We don't want them to think of learning as something that only happens in school. We want them to be lifelong learners. And so that's why I try to really build projects and assignments that have a connection to the world they live in. So the million dollar project is a fun project, but it also, you know, is teaching them how to work within a budget and they're learning how to use Google Sheets and they're also learning how to find things online that they want. So again, those are all real life skills that are very connected to the curriculum outcomes. So I really try to do that as much as I can. I want all of my students to see themselves as capable and successful. And again, that's an important thing. They all can do it. It just might look differently in how they do it. So we really try to, you know, if, if a student needs an, um, an adaptation to support their learning, again, there are so many great tools out there that will support them. We certainly don't want them to be self-conscious about the fact that their learning might look different um, from someone else's or we don't want them judging someone else because someone else might express themselves in a different way because of their learning style. So those are important principles of learning. Um, in terms of assessment and evaluation, um, assessment is how I gather information on student, student learning and I provide multiple opportunities for students to demonstrate an understanding of the curriculum outcomes. So what that means is that one test alone will not define their mark on their report card and a lot of students get very hung up on, on tests and assessments and how it's going to impact 
their grades. So some of the things that I do to collect um, information on student learning is I have regular conferences with students and I'm constantly making anecdotal notes when I'm circulating through the room and supporting the learning that's going on. So I'm making observations, I'm taking anecdotal records, I have a lot of checklists and I will as we get into more projects I will be providing more rubrics. Um, I also do like running records of their reading and audio recordings using Flipgrid. I also do, you know, use the, their um, what they provide me on Google Classroom. And this year I'm also using Pear Deck. So again, what I tell them is, you know, they want to be always putting their best effort into things because it all goes into their assessment and evaluation pool and how they show me what they, what they know. So we will be using, and right now in Google Classroom, you may have noticed that the assignments are worth 100. It will be changing, and I will be grading them uh, on a 1 to 4 scale. So a, a, a 1 is a limited um, a limited uh, ability to demonstrate an understanding of the concept or, or the outcome that we're working on. A two would be that they're working towards an understanding of the content and concepts or the outcome. A three would be they have a competent uh, knowledge and understanding, so it's a good understanding. Um, and then a four would be a really in-depth knowledge and understanding of the outcome. First report card, um, they will receive a developmental scale. So it will either be a well-developed, a developing as expected, or needs development mark that they will receive. And then on the second semester and the third report card, so in the second and third report card, they will receive a letter grade from A to D, which corresponds to the their ability to demonstrate the outcomes. So it's a little confusing, but um, certainly this is something I will be going over with students and they will start to see these uh, four, through, four through one marks on their work rather than I've just been kind of grading it right now as either a zero, which means they have to resubmit it because I don't think it demonstrates their best effort, or a 100, they've completed it. Those are the, the two scales that I've been using right now, but that will start to change in October as we jump into the outcomes. So um, the last thing I really want to talk about is how important communication between home and school is. We really are a team supporting your child and uh, I always say it takes a village and it really does. Um, we, we need to be on the same page, we need to support one another, and we need to develop a, a common understanding of what is expected of your student um, so that we can both be on or all be on the same page in in the messaging we give your child and this is all the more important amidst a pandemic because we can't get together physically like we are used to so um, certainly I'm available by phone, by email, by Google Meet. I'm available virtually any way I can. And I will do my best to make sure that you have regular updates and feedback so that if there are questions, we can work them out. And trust me when I say I won't wait until uh, a problem blossoms or bubbles before I reach out to you and ask for either support or guidance or I'll simply communicate to you what's going on and I would really encourage you to you know try to use the newsletters to open up a dialogue with your student because as a parent I know how difficult it is sometimes those kids just came come home and say oh the day was terrible because they're fixated on the fact that we didn't have internet or you know they'll come home and say that they did nothing all day well trust me we're never doing nothing we're always doing something so I do try to give you that little window through the newsletter so that you might be able to have a more meaningful dialogue with your with your student so you will see um, curriculum sessions from me like this I will share any tests or other forms of evaluation I use on Seesaw. I will not be home, sending home paper copies to be signed. Um, I'll use phone calls, emails. I'll be making e-portfolio blog posts 
um, and the students will be doing that as well. Um, every Friday, they will be expected to add an item to their Seesaw portfolio and reflect on their own learning. So if they don't do that, you can ask them why. Um, we will be having some sort of virtual parent-teacher conferences. Um, you'll also get their report cards in December, April, and June. And then you'll you'll see the regular weekly newsletter updates. My ideal situation is to send them home on Fridays, um, but just due to the unstable internet that we have this year, it, they've been a little bit later getting getting completed. I haven't been able to complete them in school, and uh, let me tell you, I've never had to work as hard as I've had to work since the pandemic. Like I'm creating a lot of content and learning to do things a lot differently, so I'm spending count hours on content creation right now so it's usually about Sunday when I've got all the content created and then I kind of shift gears and and focus on the newsletter so um, ideally those will come home on Friday but in the interim you'll probably get them on Sunday I'll also update the class website and students will receive uh, regular feedback from me on Google Classroom and I'm really encouraging them to you know stay on top of that and to not just worry about submitting the work but also reviewing the comments that I give them when I return the work so that they can shape future work that they do based on those comments. Um, remember, we are a team, and I would appreciate if you could encourage your students to accept responsibility for their own learning and to learn to be their own advocate. Ensure that your child gets enough rest. I know this is tough, but, you know, turning off that technology at night, keeping the technology outside of the bedroom, and really, you know, getting them into habit of, like, wind down habits at night so that they're not coming to school exhausted. That's so important. Um, I would really ask you to foster a love of learning and of reading. Um, to stay in tune with what we're doing at school, ask lots of questions, and I know my own son says I'm a drill sergeant, but I think it's so important to have that dialogue with your student, especially now in grade six before the hormones kick in. This is like a, a golden window as a parent. Um, I would also encourage you to monitor your child's online online activity and still put limits on device time. I think that, you know, as much as we're doing things digitally when they get home, they should get outside, they should get a break from the technology, they should play, they should make, they should create, they should bake. You know, they've, they've had a lot of time on technology at school, so when they get home, finding some other things for them to do is so important. Um, and also, the other thing that is super important for students is to get them into the habit of following multi-step directions. That's really helpful. Um, and, you know, having them accept, you know, responsibility at home, you know, whether it be in the form of chores or taking care of their own space or belongings. Again, we really want to develop that um, personal responsibility. And always remember, if you have questions or concerns, I'm only ever an email or a phone call away. So please don't hesitate um, to reach out to me as needed. And I'm confident, despite the fact that we are working in a new norm, um, we're going to have a fantastic year of learning and growth together. And I'm already finding that your students are etching a very special spot in my heart. And uh, I'm really so pleased with how we're coming together as a group and how I see them forming relationships with each other. And they're showing me that they are capable and they are confident and they are creative and they are engaged which are all the requirements for a really great year of learning and growth together so thank you for what you've done for the last six months and keeping your students engaged or your children engaged and I know your job is the toughest job in the world and uh, I, I based on what I've seen of your children so far you're doing a great job so keep on doing it and uh, thank you for sharing your child with me for the next 10 months.